So, yeah, we are we at IBM. Yep. Yeah. And what are you showing? We're showing this uh, a cell processor demo where we're rendering a picture of Mount St. Helens that was uh, recorded by satellite about a year ago. So Mount St. Helens is, is sampled at about two meter resolution and uh, some LiDAR height data was taken and the, this software is creating a 3D model on the fly by mixing the uh, height data with the satellite color data. So rather than rendering with uh, triangles, what we're doing is, is we're rendering by projecting rays from the uh, point of view and reflecting them off of objects that are in the scene until they reach a light source. And in that way, we're computing what the color of each of the pixels is. So it's actually a cell processor? This is a cell processor. And that's? It's a, th this is an example of a cell processor. All right. The, the cell processor consists of a power PC and eight uh, synergistic processing elements, which is our acceleration architecture. Each uh, synergistic processing element... Uh, you can show the picture of it there? The... Yeah, it's, uh, it's underneath that window. So there's a power PC here with uh, eight synergistic processing elements. Each, each synergistic processing element uh, has a 32 gigaflops at uh, well, it's actually a little bit less than that, but at 4 gigahertz, it'd be uh, 32 gigaflops. We're running the machine right now at uh, 3.2 gigahertz. Yeah. And we're rendering at uh, a frame rate of about be about between 20 and 30 frames a second. Which, uh, High definition uh, 3D. This is 720p. 720p 3D uh, graphics. High definition. Yeah. High definition. It's, uh, as I say, we're doing a relative of ray tracing called ray casting. Yeah. Alright, so, so this process... So you, 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 you could pilot if you wanted to. I suppose we'll pilot it like this? Yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta switch He's got to switch you over. Yeah. 720p. Alright, it's going? Yeah. Alright. Give me a little gas. I'll give you a little bit of up here. Oh, I'm not gonna crash. You might. Nice. So, so this is uh, amazing because uh, a G5 would be 40 uh, times slower. So if you were to render with a G5, it'd be about half a frame a second. Yeah. And so you're running right now about 20. So it's about a factor of 40. Can I shoot? No. No, no there's no shooting. Okay. That's in the next world. This is a new peaceful world. Don't you yeah. know? All right. Cold War is over. All right. <laughs> so, so, so this, this, uh, this small cell processor is working. Yep. And how, how long time has it been working? Well, we've had, we've, we've had this demo running in, in various locations around the world for about a year. Yeah? So, but now it's, it's starting to be produced or...? We have, uh, we've entered production. IBM will have a Blade product available a little bit later this year. The Blade product will feature two BEs on a, for, at first a double wide blade, but later a single wide blade. So double white blade or single white blade, and, uh, and the point is that it can encode video or do, do different kinds of things 40 times faster than a... There's a range of applications where our software developers have shown us very significant yeah. performance advantage over yeah. conventional systems. Uh, a lot of them have been in the media space, but we're, we're broadening our... our uh, a range of applicability to scientific uh, <laughs> physics modeling and, uh, yeah. uh, and business application software. Yeah, let's, so. let's just make a break. So hi, you working on the cell processor? Yes, I'm Jim Kale. I'm the chief architect and chief scientist of Cell Project. All right. So uh, can you say something about how does it compare to the, to the best that AMD has and uh, Intel has? Well, the unique features we have is, is, is was we started the multi-core. IBM was the first one with multi-core designs. We have two core designs with the Power 4, and with Cell, we're introducing nine cores on a chip. So we have significantly more cores than our competition. They're very power efficient and uh, are going to be able to give you uh, capabilities in multimedia processing that are unparalleled in the industry. Nine cores. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to be expensive to have uh, such a computer with nine cores? Well, the way we design it is very power efficient and very area efficient, and and we're designing this to go into game console type systems. So yeah. we're we're appropriately you know positioned for those high volume kind of markets. Yeah. 
But like the PS3 will have uh, nine cores? No. Nine cores in it. Nine yes. cores. Uh-huh. All right, but IBM is not involved in the PS3. Yeah, we're manu we're we jointly manufacture the chips with Sony that will that will be in the PlayStation 3. Ah, you do. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh -huh. So 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 this is like uh, gonna be available in the, in computers like for professionals and uh, people who need processing power. Well, we're looking at other places we can take it beyond the gaming space, but I mean it has you know it's, you know it's got a full power processor on it, 64-bit yeah. power processor. It's able to run the Linux operating system and many other features. So we so we made sure this is fully capable of running you know standard operating systems and, and, and we've open sourced uh, a, a lot of the uh, the software stack that goes with it so people can develop applications yeah. and other stuff. For example, uh, is it possible to encode high definition video in real time? Yeah, we have, it's possible to do such things in yeah. real time, yes. Uh -huh. So real time high definition entertainment and uh, video? Yeah, that was, that was one of our strives is really, really to, to put down real time applications and interactions with humans yeah. and it was a very key key feature of the chip how we how we were going to interact with people in, in real time so decoding encoding in real time was uh, a very important aspect of some yeah. of the performance attributes we wanted. Do you think it can go in a consumer electronic like a camera? Well we're going to start here over time you know technology is definitely shrinking and, and lowering power over time so it just it's you know it's a matter of time when, yeah. when such things are going to be capable and it won't be right away but so, you know. So for start there will be like a uh, this will be inside a computer. You cannot just buy it alone and put it on yourself. Or we don't. We don't have any right now. I mean, we're exploring lots of different avenues of different systems we can yeah. that can be put into. Um, you know, there's different announcements from different companies that are working with us that, that you know things like that might be possible. All right. But well, you can just uh, buy a motherboard and the the cell processor and you just plug it in. Well, it's not going to be compatible with the x86 motherboard. Yeah. But you know, there'll be other there'll be other ways that they, these things can be interconnected. You need a special motherboard. Uh, yeah. This this has its, it, this is you know specially designed for you know yeah. some some of these other applications. So it won't go into a standard motherboard right now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.